Blog Talk Radio. Alright, I feel good today. Tell them how you feel, Gerald. Come on and get up. Let's pray. Come on, Holy Ghost. Welcome to Fire, the Gospel Experience that is dedicated to honoring the true and only living Creator God. Now is the time, beloved, to let our minds, bodies, and souls be refreshed and renewed in our relationship with this wonderful, magnificent, and Omnipotent God, our Father, and you best believe his precious, beautiful, redeeming Son, our Lord Jesus, ah, Prince of Peace, wonderful Messiah and Savior. Yes, right here, Jesus is Lord. And on this fire gospel experience, Jesus the Christ is unashamedly, unapologetically, I might add, as well as unequivocally declared to be the only Redeemer. There is no other acceptable Lamb of God. He is the only chosen one with the keys of life, death, hell, the grave, and to our beautiful eternal life. He is our only hope and light for this lost, dark, and dying world that we are living in. Blessings to each and every one of you. I'm your purpose and power-driven host, Ron E. Jefferson, and I'm here to bring you the most uplifting spiritual soul inspiration as well as some of the most anointed gospel music that has ever been made and have ever been played. Fire, fire, fire. The gospel experience will light, ignite, and fan those flames that's in your spirit, man, woman, boy, or girl, because God is not a respecter of persons, y'all. He's just looking for a humble heart to worship and fellowship with him in spirit and in truth. We will be embracing from the word of God from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 23, where we read the Apostle Paul is speaking about how we have challenges because of our faith 
and then redirect his purpose toward our growing pain. The painful process I'm talking about, y'all, of being spiritual beings in earthly bodies of dust, flesh, and blood. How that many will not openly confess that even after many years in Christ, we still have certain urges and desires that have nothing to do with our spiritual life in Christ. Come on now. Let's keep it 100. Yet, these proclivities, I promise you, have no spiritual content or belief at all. But we long for relief and redemption from our fleshly desires as we grow spiritually. Thank you, God, for a new day to grow. My special guest is here, my Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity brother, gospel artist, and senior pastor, founder at Open Arms Christian Fellowship down there in Florida. Man of God, Pastor the Ford T. Williams is here, and he's going to bless us with his words of wisdom, Bible knowledge, Christian experience, and ministry work that God has employed him to do that I know he does with a joyful and a humble heart. And then later on in the broadcast, we will be shining our artist spotlight on gospel artist Larry Rogers with a very emphatic and contemporary message that is so prevalent to where we are today with all of our social ills, racism, political upheavals, financial disarray. It is so much going on. Brother Larry Williams has a message that's going to bless us. So why don't you go ahead and call a family member, friend, co-worker. I promise you, if you call your neighbor, they're going to bless you. And thank you right now for letting them know that Brother Ron E. Jefferson is back on the radio to give God his just due praise first of all, y'all. <laughs> and then for your encouragement as well as for your inspiration so that you keep on keeping on in the precious and beautiful name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord, our Savior, because he is so worthy. Oh, we're going to bless you, God. We're going to lift you high, high, higher in our life, in our thoughts, in our minds, and with our uplifted voices, because we ain't shame, no way, no how, in praising our God. Keep it right there. Thank you, Holy Spirit, God, for lighting this fuse that's about to set the internet and the radio airwaves on Holy Ghost, sanctified, fire, fire, fire.
That is our God. He has made precious and eternal promises that he will always be with us regardless of the situation, that he will never leave us, and he will never forsake us. Amen. Goes right there. Sounds of my special guest, man of God, Leofre Thomas Williams is here. William Thomas. Come on now. Yes, Lord. That's what we're talking about. The man of God is here, and he is here to bless us. Pastor Laforic William Thomas is here to bless us. Y'all just heard him singing and giving praises to our God. I feel like he is just taking us behind the veil right at the start of this fire gospel experience. That is what I'm talking about right there right there, y'all. Y'all know how we do it on this fire gospel experience. We have no shame in our game. We will ask God, Holy Spirit of God, to step in right on time whenever he feels the need to. Ha! He has our unyielding permission as we humble ourselves and ask God to just step right in and bless us as he sees fit. Amen. Goes right there. 
Bishop Thomas is here, and I promise you, y'all, we are in for a phenomenal spiritual treat. When a man of God has been blessed so to be able to bring God's unadulterated word, eternal word, and then blessed with the vocal gift to be able to sing and minister in song, it is nothing but a blessing. I promise you, amen. And with that being said, we are here to let you know that man of God, Bishop LaForward W. Thomas Sr. is a native of Jacksonville, Florida. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in music education from Florida Memorial University of Miami, Florida, and a Master's of Divinity degree from Virginia Union University School of Theology in Richmond, Virginia. Bishop Thomas has guided the Open Arms Church for the past 20 years, y'all. That's two whole decades. Growing to become a vibrant ministry in the community, city, state, and nation. Praise the Lord. Starting with 33 persons, Open Arms has grown to well over 2,000 members being developed as disciples. I love that part of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has led the congregation in purchasing property and erecting their 1,000-seat worship facility, which they occupied in December 2009. He is a family-oriented man. He is the husband of the woman of God, Sandy Lorraine, which they united in marriage on March 25th, 1989. I just love how that's included in this man of God's resume. Today, Union, they have two offspring. Forward, w. Thomas Jr. and Christian Lorraine. Amen. Goes right there. Y'all just are in for a dynamic special treat from my special guest, man of God, Pastor Laforic Thomas is here to bless us and bless us all the way. Amen. Goes right there. And we thank you, old man of God, for coming and blessing us with your presence. Welcome to Fire the God who experience. Bless you, man of God. Welcome to Fire, Fire, Fire. How you doing today, man of God? I am very, very well. Glad to be with you on today. Uh, we we went over uh, in our preliminary how to pronounce my name. And it's Lee Offric. Yeah. Lee Offric. Lee Offric. <laughs> yes, yes. Lee Offric. Uh, Lee Offric. I've yeah, had Man of yeah. God, um, Paul Askew, he's messaging me all on um, Facebook. He's breaking it down for me, Lee Offric. And uh, I appreciate y'all helping with the pronunciation because being an author and being a speaker and a, 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 a man of word, pronunciation, Lee Offric, is so very important. Thank you, man of God. We bless you in Jesus' name. We thank you for being here with us, Bishop. Why don't you just go ahead and just outside of what I've already shared with uh, my listening audience, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, sir, from the very beginning, well, from when you accepted Jesus all right. Christ. I am, a, I am a native of Jacksonville, Florida, born and raised here. Um, I am a uh, I've been in, I've been church all my life. Uh, grew up in my grandfather's house, who was a pastor of the church uh, back in. Uh, I was born in '63, so uh, from that time on to where I am today, it has been basically about ministry. I went on singing all my life, sang my first solo at two at the age of two. What? And, uh, that pl- that point on, well, at that point, Mama just stood in front of me and told me the words, and I sang it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Amen. I was nurtured, nurtured in a Christian home. Uh, okay. Went on to a Christian uh, college at Florida Memorial University in Miami, and uh, mm. uh, received my call to ministry uh, in 1986 at my home church, the Abyssinia Church of Jacksonville, and. Uh, from that point on, uh, proceeded to go to seminary at Virginia Union University and graduated from there in 1990. Uh, I had, uh, mm. I was minister for one of the larger churches in Richmond for two years. And then in 1991, I was called to the Metropolitan Baptist Church of Petersburg, Virginia, right outside of Richmond. Uh, stayed there okay. for four years, uh, then returned back to Jacksonville to succeed 
uh, one of the, the storied and stellar pastors of our city, uh, uh, Pastor Badger, who had been at the church that I came to for 48 years. And uh, wow. he, father, were great friends. And in fact, my grandfather pastored that church before Pastor Badger did. So uh, it, was, it was wonderful to come back home to a place that I knew, uh, that oh, I had been, been, been privy to. And uh, stayed there for years, and the Lord, the Lord just spoke to my heart and said, "It's time for you to do what I sent you to do." Because uh, I was telling wow. another pastor friend of mine the day I, when I came back to Jacksonville, I thought that church would be the church I'd go to heaven from. <laughs> but God, okay, God had different plans, <laughs> had different plans, and in the midst of all that, uh, uh, the Lord led us to uh, begin the Open Arms Christian Fellowship in 1999. And from that point on, we've been, we, we are 23 years old. Uh, we've been doing, the Lord has blessed us. It's all been God. Uh, I've, I've, I've shared on on many platforms, uh, musically as well as, as my preaching ministry. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, I'm married. I've uh, been married to the same woman for 33 years. Uh, and I have two wonderful adult children who are doing very, very well. Mm. And uh, we're so excited uh, about what God has next. All we got to do is just get Amen. into the flow and let him, let him guide us and direct us to the place he wants us to be. Our church is, is about discipling people. Discipling. I just yes, sir. wasn't yes, sir. You know, intrigued with having a house full. You know, you can have a house full of folks and, and very few disciples. You know what I'm saying? But when you are a disciple, yes, you are committed and you, you are convicted in your faith. And uh, what happens in the world won't pull you away because you're mm. a disciple of Christ. And so that's what we built mm-hmm. our ministry on. That grew so fast uh, because we're giving something different than what a lot of people were receiving. And that is being, being you know, faithful to your faith, you know, learning all okay. you can. I told my congregation, you can't be a Muslim and you don't learn all the Muslim stuff. <laughs> so you can't that's be a true. disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you don't know anything about him nor the word, the Bible, because he mm. is the word. Mm. So I've right. been at your own growth development. And God has been faithful. He's very, very faithful to us. Oh, God. He is so faithful. I'm glad you said that, um, Bishop uh, Thomas. Can you just break down a little bit more about um, the, the, the meat and, and, and the urgency of what it means to be a discipleship? And not just a church member. Yeah, yeah. A disciple, you know, is 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 one who follows someone teaching and then exhibits that. We hmm. say we are Christian. We are Christian. Yes, sir. We should be exhibiting and following Christ, studying Him uh, as He gave us the God information that we so desire in the earth, and so therefore. You know, we we try to impress upon people that your acknowledging Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior takes you to a new 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 realm in your walk, because now you you you've set aside all the other stuff in order to focus in on what God has for you through Christ Jesus. And so, a mm. lot of persons have bought that they're living it out. We've um, had ministers sent out and churches started. Uh, on other sides mm. of town uh, in different states because of this kind of teaching. It's very unique. I'm not, I'm, I, you know, I have, I was when I was in the Baptist church. I was one of the hoopers and the, the, the squallers. Uh, <laughs> we were Watch out now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's, that's important to me. That, because once you're a disciple, you is. learn the things of God, learn the things of Christ. And I tell my people all the time, my job is is not to make you so needy for me. Thank a you. disciple is to yes, uh, connect with God themselves and don't have to call the pastor for everything. You know, that, mm. that there's some issue. You sit here and listen to us teach every week. And if you don't apply these principles, it's not going to manifest. But once you apply those principles and try to walk obedient to the word, God God opens the windows of heaven. You know, he, he Jesus yes, he said, does. we have not, because we ask not. So he said, oh, oh. ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find not, and the door shall be opened to you. So here it is. Here it is. Here it is, Brother Ron. Well, it's Come on. seeking. 
to to develop their God-given purpose. Mm. Discover purpose in mm. Christ. My goal mm. now, like I was in school, like I was in seminary. My my seminary time, my college time was 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 pointed toward getting as much knowledge as I possibly could about the, mm. the subject matter. Jesus is our subject matter. <laughs> we want to know Thank him you. and we want to exhibit him in our lives. And that's what makes the difference. The church could be more powerful uh, if persons would just just be committed and convicted to the cause and just don't be a Christian in name, but Christian in lifestyle. I love it. I love it. So um, out of the majority of people, I would dare say, um, that are faithful in their church attendance, but maybe mm-hmm. have not yet found their created purpose in God. What right. suggestions would you give somebody, Bishop, that loves Jesus and still feels like I have not really connected with what I know God wants me to do? They know that there is a void in their life when it comes to their um, calling mm-hmm. and their service to God. Mm-hmm. Well, is, is there mm-hmm. specific steps? that you would suggest them so that they can be about the business of making Jesus known in their life? Well, first of all, they got to make him Lord of their life. You know, he, Jesus you Christ is Lord, which means that he is in charge. He is in control. There's no one mm. in front of him or before him. And you, you have to seek him while he may be found. As the you got to search Thank for you. him. But Jesus says, seek ye first what? The kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness yeah. and all the things you desire will be added unto you. Now, here's the key, that yeah. I have no desire outside of Christ. Mm. I have no desire outside of what Christ has purposed for my life. So, therefore, yeah. as I'm walking and growing, because nobody becomes a super Christian overnight. In fact, there are no super Christians sure anywhere. Don't. But as I'm sure growing, I'm, I'm coming. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in constant becoming of what God wants me to be in Christ Jesus. Not that I got to be perfect. Nobody's perfect. But I'm becoming what he wants me to be. My lifestyle exhibits certain things. You know, I, I, I do do my best to flee from evil. I do my best uh, to, to walk the narrow way. I do my best to make sure that Jesus Christ is my best friend ever, you know, and so that people can see that, so that when trials and troubles and tragedies come in your life, you won't be, you won't be, uh, uh, wavering because maybe mm. God didn't do this for you. God took a loved one home. Uh, God did this. Well, this is God's world. And so therefore we're seeking him through Christ Jesus and Christ gives us peace that no man can understand. And uh, uh, we're going to have trouble. That's what Jesus said. We're going to have trouble in his life. But be of good cheer for he has overcome the world. Everything God has purpose for anyone's life is, is just a prayer away. And then Amen. submitting. A lot of people, Ron, do more talking in prayer than listening. And they're too popular. Come on, now. You're right. <laughs> listening more so than anything else. So God can speak to your heart, you know, and, and show your heart what what should be next in your life. You know, uh, many, many times, I, you know, over the course of ministry and even, you know, before entering into ministry, you know, I read the passage where Jesus talks about bless them, um, uh, love those that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you, bless them that curse you. And I said to myself, he can't be talking to me, <laughs> but he was. He was saying, <laughs> yes, your, 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 of your discipleship is that you can do these things, that you can pray for those that, that drag your name through the mud, that do you wrong, that God's purpose will be discovered in their lives, that you can, you can, you can bless those who curse you, you know, who try yes, to bring about uh, uh Calamity in your life. You bless them, you know, uh, and, and 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 love 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 your enemies. That, that's the key. Love your enemies. Uh, mm. I, I, I've tried to love the hell out of them, you know, whether they like it or not. There you go. I'm, there I'm you go. No, yeah, I know you hate me, but anyway, really, you don't hate me. You hate the God in me. You know, you, you hate that's the right. the Christ example in me, and so it's not me, mm. but I, but the Christ that lives in me. He's just chosen me to be the vessel, chosen you to be the vessel for that particular time Amen. in that particular place. And you got to live that out. And here it is, fine. I'm leaving it along right here. We got to trust him. Got to trust him. Mm. Trust him. Mm. Trust him. Richard Smallwood wrote the song, 
just trust me. That's all God asks. You know, in all yeah. areas of yeah. life, trust them. It will work out. Work out in your favor. Mm-hmm. Amen. You started your conversation off, Bishop, when you started talking about, first of all, there needs to be a need to make Jesus Christ the Lord, the priority yes. of our lives. Yes. Uh, the omnipotent one that he is, but if that's not reflected in our own personal life, then he is not that great and mighty God that he could be for your life. I heard you just get through saying you can do great and mighty things. But what yeah, we yeah. fail to realize, and then even upon the realization of what I'm about to share, maybe the distinct understanding of what it means to die daily. That means if Jesus is Lord of my life, what did John the Baptist say? He said he must increase so that I must decrease. I think that we think too little or misunderstand what it means to decrease in God. That's taking all the fun out of being a Christian, Bishop. (laughs) But you know what? Help us understand. he surrendered to Christ Jesus. He said, I count all of my accomplishments as dumb. I mm-hmm. you know, I, I have no I have no agenda other than the agenda of Christ. And as mm-hmm. his greatest gospel and to and to help develop his people, you know. So uh, Paul was one of the most learned men, uh Pharisee, sure well. the Pharisee of the um educated man, a devout Jew, and uh you know, once he met Christ, all of that was out the window. He was trying to yes, help people. Once he got his stuff together, after Ananias, you know, opened his eyes and ministered to him, and he began mm-hmm. to learn the things of God and Christ Jesus. His mission, bro, his mission uh, was to let people see Christ in him. And man, man. Hey, and that's him. really what it's all about. Mm. Amen. Amen. I feel you. Yeah. That is so yes, important that we understand that because I would dare say when you hear people say uh, they don't like to dance or they can't dance, it's probably because they have never tried. So what we yeah. are saying is before you give up on a decision, on a valid decision to know God for yourself, you should try God. Mm-hmm. God is not intimidated mm-hmm. at all mm-hmm. by somebody's mm-hmm. doubt. He's like, well, come and test me. He said that himself in his word. He said, test me and see for yourself. <laughs> I believe God is able, Bishop. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's, that's, it is. that's all it is. We walk by faith. We trust him. We've seen him to do, do too many things. You know, I, you know, my life has been nothing but a life of trust. A life trust. Amen, amen. A life that comes on, on his own. Yes, yeah, so all of those things uh, go along with developing the faith. Amen, amen. Well, we had prayer earlier, Bishop, and we prayed that there be no interference and there be no stagnation <laughs> in the broadcast. And you kind of fading in and out a little bit. I guess the word that we are sharing is just so powerful that the devil has sent demonic forces out to try to interfere with the broadcast, man of God. I'm just letting you know. You're fading out a little bit. The devil is attacking. <laughs> yeah. We bind him right now. Amen. Amen. So go ahead, sir. Continue on. Continue on. Okay. Um. So, so uh, as we were saying, I, 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 I Amen. See, this is what we have to deal with, saints of God. When the people of God get together, uh, the devil will try to send interference. This is not primarily technical issues, technical difficulties. Just like when the apostles were sent to cross over to the other side in the boat and then a great storm arose. And just like when Job's sons and daughters died because a strong wind came and collapsed the home. Mm -hmm. The devil has been given an opportunity to be the prince of the air, which means he does have some capability to invade our physical world. We need to open our eyes to this truth and to this understanding. So when we have these disruptions and disconnections 
It is because the enemy has seen a hot spot of glory to God, and he has decided to send opposition against it. Now, I'm going to see if Bishop is back with us. We're going to do a mic check, Bishop. Come on, Bishop. You know the devil stays busy, but God is busy. Come on. Can come you on. hear me? I can, we can hit. We, we with you now, Bishop. Go right ahead. You know the okay. devil is, is uh, uh, opposing yeah. your anointed ministry. You know that. <laughs> you ain't, this ain't nothing new. You used to this. He, <laughs> oh, yes. I, he, he needs to know that he lost a long time ago. But anyway, mm. uh, whatever he tries, he is the prince of the air. So we have to fight through that, you know, as well as believers and make sure our prayer lives are strong and God's purpose Amen. and intent Amen. will be realized yes, in sir. everything that we do. Uh, so it, it, it's, Amen. you know, the faith walk is not an easy walk. Uh, mm. You know, James Cleveland wrote the song years ago, Nobody Told You the Road Was Gonna Be Easy. Uh, Nobody. We don't believe he, he brings us this far to leave us. Where, wherever he uh, shows us vision, he has already given provision. Uh, look Amen. at the Bible. Yeah. You know, he, he, he provided for Abraham. He provided for Moses. He provided for no. He provides for everybody who seeks to do his will. We just got to be content yeah. with that. Content with that. that. There's some things in this earth that were not meant for us. You know, Come on. I mean, certain, certain platforms are not meant for you. You can't be like everybody else. Be your own authentic, genuine self. And let That's God good. do the shaping and molding of what's around you to make you a successful, mm. uh, vibrant believer, you know. Um, so we got to press upon people. Got to press upon people. It's up to you. You, you got as much Amen. of God as you want. <laughs> you, know? yeah. you got as much of He's been with you all the time. So he knows what he's doing. You just got to trust the path he's leading you. He says, for I know the plans I have for you. And those plans Ooh. are for you to prosper. And not a Jesus. disaster, not to be destroyed. <laughs> if I'm a child of God, if I'm, a, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm an heir of God and joint heirs with on, Jesus Christ, Christ, that means that there's royalty on me. <laughs> you know, Jesus. That, that he, said <laughs> have poor, he, he said we always have the poor among us, but I don't believe he was talking about me because I'm a child. How can I be poor and I'm a child? Mm. Mm. You know what He's I'm saying? talking about us. How can, how can, I, <laughs> how can I be the child of God? Who has and yes, owns sir. everything, and I am living yes, like a pauper. I'm living like a peasant. I am royalty. Don't make that's sense. What, that's what the make, um, make that the make prodigal sense. son. Yeah, yeah. The, the prodigal son figured that out. He said, "Hold up, I'm out here in this big tent, and it, <laughs> back at my father's house, I had everything I sold uh, yeah. Let me get my let me get my pets back. Let me dust myself. I'm going back. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, sir. And you know, I always want to get a son. He had to shake himself. I want to be a son. Huh? He had to shake himself. He had to shake himself. Come this sense. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. go back home with a listen, watch it, with a prepared seat of what he was going to say to mm -hmm. his dad. And his dad said, forget all that, man. Even if you were out there in the world and the residue <laughs> of sin was on you, you were still my son. And so you yes, turned home. So I put a robe on your back, shoes on your feet, ring on your finger. We're going to kill it. Come on. And we will have a, re a celebration. And so, therefore, that see, what, what people have to understand in this hour is that we got to move from being God's creation to God's child. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Outside Jesus. of Christ, Come on. you're still his creation. You, you're created mm. in his image, but in Christ, you are his child. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And, and he's a good parent. He's a good, good father. He takes care he of his children. You know, it's only when we get a get ahead of ourselves you want to rush God no there was an old saint back in the church I grew up that sang this song you can't hurry God oh no you can't do it. got to wait you trust him and give him time no mm. matter how long it takes he's a God that you can't hurry but guess what he'll be there don't Hallelujah. you worry he may not come when you want but he's always on time <laughs> he's always on time doc amen you you shared that and you so right uh, man of God I'm gonna share this too and uh, we're going to take this music break because what we're doing is we are having a Bishop Leofric Thomas That's it. mini concert, mini concert right here on this fire gospel experience. And um, when the prodigal son's father saw his son because he was patiently waiting. Now, we talk about the prodigal mm -hmm. son, but we, father, but we're really talking about God, our father. He patiently mm -hmm. waited for us. Mm -hmm. 
to return right. from our waywardness. This is the right. part that blesses me because he knew the potential of his son. So he had mm-hmm. already made preparations to be a blessing to them regardless of which path they took. God has right. already right. prepared forgiveness and blessings when we come with mm-hmm. humility and sincerity. Mm-hmm. When we come back, Bishop, we're going to talk about this anointed music ministry that you have because I'm a yes. witness. God, God will step in. Won't he do it?
You are listening to Fire, the gospel explosion where the praises are going up and the worries are going away. Playing for you the best and the newest gospel music on the planet and the most inspiring encouragement under God's heaven. Keep tuning in and bless your family, your friends, and your co-workers by telling them about Fire. Fire, fire, fire. The Evangelistic Outreach Gospel Ministry, where we get our praise on. I was getting my dance on, Bishop Thomas. I was just reminiscing <laughs> and thinking about all of the times that I knew about. And that does not include the times God stepped in, and we won't even know about that till we get to glory. And we'll be able to see mm-hmm. for ourselves all the many times we were rescued and didn't even realize it. Amen. God stepped in right on time. Yes. Got to give a shout out to... Uh, your church member, your brother in Christ, my brother in Christ, man of God, Paul Askew, for connecting us together. Thank you, brother Paul Askew. He's been so faithful since God put him into my life. He is an anointed gospel artist. He's charting the billboard charts and gospel music charts with his anointed ministry, and we're grateful for that young man. But man of God, I just want to let you know I'm grateful for your gospel ministry. I know you may have taken a bit of a hiatus from gospel music, but I'm glad to see you back on the gospel music scene. Can you tell us a little bit about your gospel music ministry? Yes. Uh, we uh, The music you've been listening to, we uh, recorded that in 2003. So it's been Come on. Uh, almost 20 years since I did something, and um, I've been pondering, pondering what to do next. And uh, Paul, uh, God sent Paul back into our lives. Paul grew up in our church. Um, oh. He has a wonderful testimony himself. And uh, yes, he tells he the story of how uh, he, he mimicked everything that I did that, that set him on course. And uh, he came back and asked me to do uh, a duet with him on his album. And I readily agreed, consented. And um, in fact, I hadn't seen or heard from Paul in over. 15 years and uh, wow, I that's saw a long where, he, time. where he was um, on uh, Billboard's chart on Facebook and I contacted him, I listened to his music, saved me and I said, man, that yes. is awesome and then that began yes, our is. relationship being restored and from that point he has taken the, the, the initiative that I'm going to get my bishop back into the music music scene and uh, uh, yes. he's pressing yes. and pushing me and I appreciate him uh, for what he's doing. He's showing me a lot of stuff that I didn't know. Uh, I, I had Amen. dug so heavily into pastoring and developing this church and kind of put my music on the back burner, even though I was appearing on other person's CDs, like uh, Bishop McKissick, uh, like um, Allen and Allen, uh, the Georgia Mass Choir, Snook Troy Speed, mm. all of those persons okay. appeared on this CD. And uh, everywhere I go, pretty much, uh, people who know me, who 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 purchased the CD back in the day, uh, who purchased it on iTunes, that we re-released it in 2014, I believe, uh, on iTunes. When I'm gonna do the next? When you go do something? When you go do something next? Hello. Well, let me t- let, let me tell you this, Bishop. The thing about it is, and I say this to all of my special guest gospel artists, ministers. Uh, if you all don't date y'all music, best way up and down. That's new music. Because, look, if it's anointed, it's still going to sound good. I don't care when it's played. Amen? Right, 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 right. So, uh, I guess this, this, this album, that CD from 2003 still lives. It still lives. I still have people asking for it. I wanted to get it. And so, all they have to do yes, now sir. is go on to pull up Bishop Lee mm-hmm. Thomas, and it comes right up. And uh, you can hear Amen. all of the music that's, that's on there. Um, Troy Sneed, who passed away in 2020 from the COVID virus, was my producer uh, back then. Uh, uh, and um, uh, I-, I appeared on his CDs a couple of times as well. And um, I've just, just kind of been waiting. You know, you have to wait on the timing of God, the timing of God. And yes, so sir. When yes, he brought, sir. brought Paul back to us, and Paul is well-versed. And what's going on in the industry, even as he's learning, you know a lot of people. And he said that Bishop, we got to get you back out there. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna lead you back. So I appreciate him. 
uh, uh, for what he's doing and how God has transformed and turned his life back to Amen. him. Uh, it, is, it is amazing. So we're, we're just blessed, man. So um, uh, we're looking forward to doing something real soon. Uh, Do it. That will be, Do it. you know, <laughs> doing something real soon before the year the year is over, hopefully, hopefully and um, uh, be back on the scene. Because, uh, I, I, you know, I, what? Ron, I really never wanted to be a traveling artist, uh, but that okay. what had, had happened, you know, the traveling Listen. and the, the wear and tear and trying to get back to the church for pastoring, that kind of thing. So I'm I'm, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping back. The ministry is large enough now where, you know, you have ministers on staff and elders on staff, people able to do uh, the work that I was trying to do all by myself. And uh, I can kind of begin looking at some of the things I want to do. Uh, as I get closer uh, to the age mm. of 60, I'll be 59 in October, but next year is 60 yeah, years on. old. So I want to I begin living well, for God, still, yes, but enjoying life as well. Mm-hmm. Amen. Well, listen, uh, Bishop, when you get there, when you cross that 6-0 uh, mark, I want you to know that I'll be there to greet you with a certified 60 years young club. We're going to welcome you to <laughs> that sixth dimension and just receive yes. you with open arms. <laughs> yes, I was just sir. reading yes, Bishop please. on Facebook. I was just reading on Facebook, Bishop, excuse me. Uh, just the other day, you were talking about achieving some things, about how you um, were not necessarily a, a traveling man when it came to your music ministry. Um, I just read this, and I want to share this with you and the listeners the other day, where it says that great successes are not achieved in our comfort zones. Okay. So that's okay for us sometimes to press on because when we yes. step outside our yes. comfort zone, we realize that there's areas in our lives that we can grow had we mm. not ventured outside of our normal right. regular routine where everything is situated and comfortable and predictable. God wants to expand us to the utmost because this is where we realize that we have brand new gifts that we didn't even know we had, Bishop. Yes, 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 yes. I, you know, I'm, I'm intrigued, and what kind of got me going again, I stumbled up, and I'm always reading the Word of God, but I stumbled up on the, the episode when Jesus came walking on the water, and Peter okay. said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. And you just said about mm-hmm. uh, being comfort zone. He was comfortable in the boat, but when he saw yeah, he Jesus was. calling him to purpose, and Jesus said, come. He stepped out of the boat and did something that was mm. supposed to be literally impossible. He started walking right. on water. Here's the key. Here's the key, Ron. He was walking on water in a storm. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it was a storm. Come on. Yeah. As long as you can, yeah. walk, as long as you are walking with Jesus, you can walk through any storm. You can you can uh-huh. go through anything. That's as good. long as you are, keep your eyes on. Now, it wasn't until he took his eyes off Jesus that the Bible said yeah. he began to sink. Okay. All right? So, but once, yeah. and, and then Jesus grabbed them up, and they walked back on the water again <laughs> in the storm, back to the yeah. boat, and everything calmed down. You know something? Amen. Mm-hmm. It, is. Mm-hmm. it is. It is. It is. That's good, Bishop. That's good. I appreciate that, too. I'm going to share this with you before we let you get out of here. There are some things that have just been troubling in my spirit uh, for many, many years now, and yet and still I see the hand of God stepping in when even the world sees that some things need to change. And what I'm talking about is prayer being reinstituted back into our school because we didn't have none of these school mass shootings until they took prayer out of the schools. We didn't have that. See, yeah. we, we, we have yeah. a God, we have a God where he says, I'm, on, I'm omnipotent, but I don't kick in doors unless I choose to. But for the most part, I stand at the door and knock and be willing mm-hmm. to come in if I'm invited. And if y'all don't want me there, mm-hmm. I'll go. And then guess what? Mm. Whatever God is not, the devil is. And so the other yeah. thing is Roe v. Wade overturned. Mm. No more legalized mm. mass murders of our babies. 
what would the man of God say about these current turn of events? Because a lot of religions other than Christianity criticize us because we supposedly don't get involved in current events and current events. Our voices are not heard, so they think or say. What would you say, man of God, to these turn of, a, of events nationwide? Well, well, the, the uh, prayer back in school, I, I haven't really looked at that wholeheartedly yet, but I, I need to see what they mean actually by prayer. They're saying Christian prayer or they're saying any type of prayer, Muslim or whatever mm-hmm. religion that may be. That could cause a problem mm-hmm. as well. But if you're going to say, yes, sir. What, what we got to understand, Ron, is that we do not live in a Christian nation any longer. America is not, <laughs> but we're not. We're a melting pot of all yeah. kinds of religions, all kinds of faiths, you know, uh, yeah. even though we claim that Christianity is dominant, uh, it could be more dominant if the Christians would step up to the plate. You know, Gandhi said, yeah. he said, I would have been a Christian if, if, except for the Christians. <laughs> I'm saying the mm, Christians carry me away. I, I, so, I've heard that. So we, we have, <laughs> there's so many, so many undertones to everything, you know. You got the evangelicals pressing for this. Uh, they they want to preserve uh, uh, womb life, but don't want to provide after the womb. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's so, right. You're right. I, 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 as a believer, I don't condone abortion uh, flippantly, you know, but if there's a problem with a woman uh, surviving or the child surviving or that person has been raped by someone or incest, you know, we have to look at that differently. But I just don't approve of uh, 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 abortion centers to abort babies because somebody had yeah. casual sex. You know what I'm saying? That's you, right. You knew that was considered right. when you laid down. You know, however you did. Mm-hmm. So therefore, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a, I, I'm I'm appreciative that they said school prayer back in school because I remember in the day, you know, our teachers they prayed over us. You know, they. They sure did. The, the school. Um, they allowed us to pray. You know, they allowed us to do things that uplifted God. And to, they, for that, mm-hmm. they snatched away these last 20, 25 years. Now they see the need for it, you know, that God's hand will cover even the more if we yeah. seek him, if we call on him. He says, call me while I may be found. Seek me while I may be found. Mm-hmm. I'll be there. Uh, but I just think that uh, in the Roe versus Wade piece, uh, that they need to look at it a look, look differently. And, and some states have it with restrictions and limitations, and others have just cut it completely out. So that means if someone has a life-threatening situation going on, and, and it's either them or the baby, that means that person has to die. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's not yeah. fair to the woman. That, that, that's not fair. Uh, so we have so many... Oh God, things in this in this country that that could be dealt with the racism and the you know uh, the the blatant lying and cheating and all the stuff that we do you know politically uh, it's a challenge you know so we have to try to keep people focused um, on what's important you know our community has to get back to voting so we can uh, curtail Thank some you. of this stuff that's going on you know. Um, mm-hmm. And then, so, if you don't vote, you, you, you open your, you leave yourself uh, to the leadership of those who oppose you. So uh, we mm-hmm. got to get out and do that. Um, but again, on those two items, uh, that's my position. You know that um, I applaud it. I hope it, the prayer back in school is done, you know, properly. Uh, and I pray that it it just doesn't become a, 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 a event that you just do. But that there's some persons that are actually there to help uh, pray prayers uh, for the productivity and progress of the students and the covering and keeping of them from persons who have been demonically possessed uh, to do ungodly, mm. mass shooting, whatever manner of evil it may be. Uh, and uh, I pray for our nation concerning this Roe versus Wade piece uh, that we can get some clarity on it and that we'll be able to give everybody a fair chance. Amen. Amen. And I don't know if our listeners are fully aware of the whole process of abortion is, is that the, the, the fetal child is basically dissected and torn apart, literally limb by limb from the mother's womb. 
scaffolds are reached up inside into the inside the woman's womb and the baby is pulled out piece by piece and this is murder because that is a living being so i'm with you um bishop i'm looking forward to more clarity more definition to both of these subjects so that we can get a firm grasp and understanding on what to expect Mm. and we as christians as we feel led we do need to get involved there needs to be a godly voice introduced into our society that's why god says Mm. take it to the uttermost parts of the of the earth Mm -hmm. um we just mm-hmm. have to learn how to be appropriate in whatever the setting is, because if we go in fanatically, they will not hear what we say. We could be totally right, but if our presentation is not proper, we'll get dismissed because they're looking for an excuse to try to excuse us from their surroundings and presence anyway. So, Bishop, I am looking forward to you coming back so that we can continue this kind of collaboration and discussion on things yes. that need to be talked about, sir. I am excited about having met you, and I look forward to our ongoing relationship as it pertains to our uplifting our Jesus the Christ in the name of God the Father, Son Jesus, as well as Holy Spirit God. Is there a contact number that you could leave us with? Yes. Um, uh, again, uh, I am the lead pastor um, of the Open Arms Community Church. We changed our name to Open Arms Community Church uh, in Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, if you want to find me, you can go on Facebook and pull up Bishop Leopard Thomas or Open Arms Community Church. All of our uh, videos and services and teachings are on there. Uh, we're also on YouTube at OAC, OACC Official, OACC Official on YouTube. And everything is on there as well. Our church address is 2763 Dunn, D-U-N-N Avenue. 2763 Dunn, D-U-N-N Avenue, Jacksonville, Florida, 32218. And if you so desire to give us a call, uh, that number is 904-766-5797. 904-766-5797. If you so choose to worship with us on tomorrow and you're not in Jacksonville, uh, you can pull us up uh, on again on Facebook and YouTube. And we begin our services at uh, 1015 every Sunday. Uh, we never mm. did, uh, uh, Ron, we never did, our church never did shut down during the pandemic. We kind of scaled Amen. back. We had worship Sunday with essentials and now we're back up to a little over 200 persons attending, and I have a large uh, virtual audience as well. So uh, that's um, that's been a blessing on both sides. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. The people of God, the remnant of God, will always be present. We will always persevere because we are kept and covered by the hand of a mighty God. Bishop, I thank you so much, sir. Uh, I want you to know you have an open door invitation. Whenever you feel so led, if I take too long to invite you back, please get in touch with me and say, Brother Ron, I got that fire burning back in me, sir, and I'd like to come back and visit with you, and I would be more than honored and pleased to have you come back and join us, sir. Also, too, what about any music that you have been blessed to create? Where can your music be downloaded? Because I'm about to play you and Brother uh, Paul Askew's phenomenal song shortly, but... Where where can any of your music be uploaded for my listeners to be Again, blessed by your music ministry? Yeah, yeah, we're we're on Apple Music, Apple Music, Bishop Lee Alfred Thomas, with you always. Um, I think we're on Spotify as well. That if you have that that platform, you can put up in all the other platforms. If you can Google, if you got Google Play, you just put my name in Bishop Lee Alfred Thomas, it will come up, and you can get it that way. Or if you want a hard copy, you can contact the church, and we'll Get it to you. We'll get it to you. Amen. At a, listen, at a nominal fee, we'll get it to you. <laughs> <laughs> but, Amen. And uh, for all of you word big... people like myself, uh, I'm, I'm happy to pronounce Lee Afric and spell it for you. L-E-O-F-R-I-C, Lee Afric William Thomas. Amen. It goes right there. Bishop, we are blessed and happy for you. Uh, we're excited uh, to know you. Look forward to just being a partner with you in every way that we can. Just please, please, please keep us in your prayers and please stay in touch, sir. 
definitely will. Thank you so, so very much. And, again, we look forward to working with you for many, many years to come. We're, we, we, we're hitched together because we're, we're brothers uh, fraternally as well. So we can't, can't get away but from each other, man. Yeah, so 06. That's it. In the house. <laughs> In the house. <laughs> hey, and I'm uh, just uh, on, on parting, sir, just to let our listeners know the power of spoken word, that when you are fading out with the disruption, when we spoke mm-hmm. uh, about the evil interference, you came in mm-hmm. loud and clear. So what we're saying is the scripture has already told us that when we submit unto God that and mm-hmm. resist the devil, that he will flee. We just demonstrated that for y'all because that's a spiritual principle that God gave us to use. We just need to be about the use, a business bishop of using yes. what the that's good Lord gave us above. Amen. Absolutely. Bishop uh, Lee Alfred Thomas was right here on Fire the Gospel Experience. Bless you. Keep your God, cover you, and prosper you in every good and godly thing that you do from this day forward. And let it overflow to be a blessing to everyone that's associated with you, your ministry, family, and friends. It's my prayer for you, Bishop. Bless you, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Bishop Thomas was here, y'all. Y'all heard him. Yes, indeed. Y'all heard him for your very own self right here on this fire gospel experience. Yes, yes, yes. And for all of you anointed bishops, pastors and reverends that have not had the pleasure of being on this fire gospel experience. I'm looking for you because we look forward to having the leaders of our church bodies to come to this fire gospel experience platform and share your anointing and spread your ministry all over the continent and the world. Blessed to be syndicated by five wonderful Kingdom collaborators, Jerry Royce Live over at Positive Power 21 Christian Media with Natalie Peaches over at GSWC Radio Gospel Songwriters Conference, as well as Woman of God, Lavette Gillespie with Praise Him More Media. And then, of course, Pam Jones with The River and Word Gospel Radio Station. And then finally with Woman of God, Stephanie McDonald over at United Praise. There is no reason for you not to get in touch with this fire gospel experience ministry and let us kingdom collaborate so that your ministry can take off, take flight, and go to parts unknown that you have not been blessed to do so. So get in touch with me, Ron E. Jefferson, 870-413-0220 is the number to call for the sake of growth of your ministry as you honor and glorify God. Or send me an email address, ronaldjefferson1 at aol.com and I'm on Facebook, Ron E. Jefferson. So there you go. Get your praise on. You are tuned into fire. The gospel experience. Here is man of God, Lee Alfred, William Thomas, and man of God, Paul Askew, with their Chart climbing, anointed, hit making gospel music. Talking about God, mm. you just never, never, never gave up on me. That's a blessing right there, y'all. You brought me through so much. Never gave up on me. I turned on you and I didn't trust. No, I even gave up on me. Yes, 
you did Every day you stuck with me When I didn't want to stay
I promise you. I promise you. I tried it, y'all. I did everything in my little feeble power to try to work some things out on my own, and y'all know what happened. It was a total mess. It was worse than it was before I even put my hands on it. Things just got worse. So I'm so grateful for woman of God, Joanne Tyson, bringing that new music. Thank you, man of God, with Milton Wallace, for sending us new music entitled, Without You, Dear God, I Can Do Nothing. Amen. That's why I seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, y'all, first. Before I even mess the thing up trying to put my hands on some stuff, I ask God to step in right on time. This is the segment of this anointed fire, the gospel experience, where you gifted people of God that have your musical talents, your abilities to bless us and shine bright for our Lord God Almighty. Yes. Shine on the spotlight where you beautiful people will come into this platform and share your ministry and bless us with your anointed music while I put you in this spotlight and let you shine for Jesus like you never had before. My special guest for Shine on the Spotlight is Man of God. I'm trying to tell y'all, this young man here, he is a multi-talented man of God. He's doing so many different things. I'm just excited that man of God, Chris King, producer of his own ministry platform, connected us together so that I can bring this young man who is doing phenomenal things as a hit maker, producer, songwriter, vocal coach, I'm not finished, artist, musician, I'm still not finished, and live studio pro sound engineer, CEO, and founder at Ain't no slipping. Kind of reminds me of that song. Ain't no half stepping. But they ain't slipping, y'all. Coming to y'all from Clovis, New Mexico, where he went to high school, and now living in Brunswick, Georgia. He's just a man of many talents, and we are happy and excited to continue to bring you these people that are not only blessed by God, but anointed to do so. Without any further ado, man of God, Larry Rogers is here to bless us with his music ministry and testimony. Thank you, man of God. Thank you for joining Fire the Gospel Experience. Man of God, Larry E. Rogers. How you doing, sir? Greetings, sir. I'm doing fine. Doing hey, fine. Man. God is good. We have... We happy to catch you. I'm sure with so many different responsibilities and talents that you have, you keep a busy schedule. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. We we we're, we're, we're just doing rehearsals and stuff like that. Most of the time on the weekends, rehearsals and for different performances going on. So we are we're staying busy for the kingdom. Yes, sir. So, so, so where did all of this long, wonderful? ecstatic and experienced resume begin for you. Where did you start off? Was it just as a gospel artist and then it just excelled from there? Yes, sir. You know, I started, uh, <clears throat> I grew up in church, you know, mother, my mother recognized a, a music gift to play drums when I was okay. a little, maybe like my, maybe three years old and she had me sit on the drummer's lap while he moved the foot pedal and I did everything else. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, so we did that for so, some years so, and years, and then so when you spread abroad, up, you know. You driving everybody crazy. When you was growing up uh, as a little boy, <laughs> you was driving everybody crazy, beating on pots and pans. Yes, sir. You, you, you act like you know me. <laughs> <laughs> I could just feel it, bro. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Hey, man, yes, and then from there, how did how, how did your world open up to help you see what it is you knew God wanted you to do for your life? Well, you know, I, this is one of those things. That my testimony is like music saved my life. You know, mm. uh, really, you know, I, I had like I was a I was a troubled child. You know, well, you're not gonna say real trouble, but I got into a lot of stuff that having a having a, a preacher as a father and and a mother. She was advanced mm. in the Church of God in Christ and. You know, you would think that, mm-hmm. hey, you know, I'd have been well rounded in church. And I was. We went to church every Sunday, and we did, you know, did the church thing. But I still got, I dabbled in stuff that I shouldn't have. And, and uh, that sounds familiar. Was what the, yeah. It saved my life. I tell everybody that every time I say, man, you know, if it wasn't for music, man, I'd, I'd probably be locked up. You know, if oh, God didn't. Oh. 
he did you know use this gift to 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 redirect me and and uh, um just change my whole world and you know i grew mm-hmm. i grew I, I grew a love for the church music and then music period you know amen that's all right and so let me ask you this, man of God. So with uh, your background and with, I'm going to say, with your desire to really stay in touch with the real world and the issues as well as your faith in God, is that what helped you kind of create this music message that we're about to enjoy entitled Why I Run? Yeah, yes, sir. You know, I've always, I've always, uh, um, I've always had my ear to the street and watched the things that I didn't like or dis- disagree with. Because remember, I told you I was, you know, I was a problem child. So when I really mm-hmm. started my, when God started shaping my mind to come towards kingdom, I saw a lot of things that just, that just didn't, I didn't like, and uh, that didn't, mm. I felt like this was wrong. And and so with that song there, we experienced something here in the city, of Brunswick, Georgia, that that made worldwide news, and that's with the uh, Maude Arbery case. The young man mm. that was shot down by running, and you know that yeah. happened like not too like a few few blocks away from my house, you know. Oh so, and uh, when it happened, you know, um, of course, you know there was a, uh, if you follow the story, it was a lot of hush hush at first, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, and then it and then it blo- it blossomed out when the video got out and everything, and uh, so mm-hmm. it just it just you know there was something that I knew uh, that we had to do, and I heard you know different people were making it was. There were, people were writing songs and stuff, and it was really vulgar. And I was like, you know, we can't win this battle being vulgar because, you know, really we can't be fighting the police. You know, <laughs> we're gonna lose. It got, we're out there. Right, 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 right. But, you yeah, know, and I always yeah. and I always thought that if we if we use our mind and the gifts that God give us to as our weapons, you know, and I always noticed that in the, in the black community, if you if you do food and good music. They coming together, you know, <laughs> and so that's and that's what I did. I, I knew I knew good music would bring our community together, and so that's how I came up with the song. What of course the message was there, but I knew I wanted to lace it with a really good beat and some really good yeah. music that would would drive our community to to, to unite. Amen. That's unity is yes, really what's up because we can affect more positive change when we learn how to come together, stick together, stay together, pray together. That's the open door that God wants us to utilize. But I'm going to say this because apart from us building our faith in God, all of our labors will be in vain because it will only exist as long as we're on this earthly temporal plane. We are trying to go beyond just this life existence. We are trying to make a spiritual connection to where we affect eternity in our personal lives in some small way and then leave a godly heritage for the generations that are going to come behind us that will need God just like we need God. So why don't we just go ahead and be blessed by this wonderful, I'm going to say contemporary motivational message by Man of God, Larry <laughs> E. Rogers, in our shine artist spotlight. Why Y'all ready to take I this run? run? Yeah. The melanin in our skin makes up dead last in the human race. No win at the finish line, but I can't breathe, so I'm falling out of place. Equality shouldn't be this hard, so we will forever run with mom. Protests of our tragedy make you black, but we kill for people who are black. So we'll never end the fight for our right to life, because there is never a day when equality isn't right.
we run y'all because we are running for equality for justice for a better day and we believe god leads the way man of god larry e rogers that is a very poignant and provocative song i am praying (laughs) that god will continue to bless the very works of your hands and your mind so that you can continue to create these very relevant songs for us. Please feel free to send any and all of your music to this Fire Gospel Experience so I can keep you in my playlist and keep you on the air on this particular platform, man of God. I got it. I got yes, you. Sir. I got you. Yes, sir. We any appreciate that, sir. Any words of wisdom that you like to part with us? Any words of wisdom that you want to share with us? Words of wisdom, man. You, you, ooh, man, I'm, I'm going to say, man, y'all, we got we to gotta, push one another. We got to push one another. When we see one struggling, you know, the, the song was talking about, you know, how we can stand together as one. The Bible says that yeah. with their strength, uh, with their unity, their strength. We're, and know that we're stronger, so much stronger together. You know, Ooh. I know we all have our different views and stuff, but, but if we can find a common dom- denominator that we can stand together on, we're that much more stronger. And we can impact Amen. the world really quick. Amen. Amen. How can you be contacted for concert events, revivals, or any programs for any church events, church concerts, as well as your social media contacts so that my listeners can follow on social media? And where can this amazing music that you produce be uploaded? Yes, sir. We can, well, we, you, can, you can purchase our music on any of your, your major downloads or streaming uh, systems, platforms. Uh, I am on Facebook, Larry E. Rogers Jr. Facebook, Larry E. Rogers Jr. Make sure you put that Jr. because my dad has the same name. <laughs> See that? And um, <laughs> and we're we're on we're on Instagram and on Twitter. We're on Instagram with Larry Larry E. Rogers Jr. NSP, and uh, we're on Twitter as well. Uh, e Natural One, and then uh, to book us, you know, you can either call my personal line. Or we could you could email us at why I run at gmail dot com. Yeah, why I run? Why, yeah. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, why yeah, I you run? can find all of that on. Yeah, yeah. Why I run twenty one at gmail dot com. Yeah, that's, that's, awesome. that's how you can reach us on the email. And you can also reach us through Facebook. I know now a lot of people are making contact through social media now, so we. We do have that option open as well. And I don't know if you want me to give my phone number out, but uh, I don't mind. Please feel free to go right ahead, so I get mine out all the time. Yeah, so that that number is 912 
Just call us. We'd love to come and celebrate and help you and, and just enjoy your company and fellowship together, you know. We really, we, really, we really love what we do, and we're serious about what we do. So we, would, we definitely want the world to join in this, in this global anthem uh, uh, that we, we, we got on our hands. But we want the whole world to join in with us. Like I said, where there's unity, there's strength. If we can get more people to join in, we become that much more stronger. Absolutely. I say that all the time. We are so much better together than we work hand in hand. It ain't about position or titles or about who gets the most prestige. It's about are we being effective collectively. Am I bringing my gift, my talents, my ability, and my time to the process? Because you know what they say? The best ability is availability. Bless you, man of God. We thank you. We look forward to you coming back to this fire gospel experience. Anytime you're ready, I'll be ready for you. Sir? Hey, thank you for Hello? joining us. Yes, sir. Thank, yes, you, for sir. thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for having hey, me. Man, I enjoyed man. it all. Man of God, Larry E. Rogers Jr. is here on Fire the Gospel Experience and I shine out the spotlight. He blessed us, y'all. He's going to keep blessing us, too. I have, no doubt. I have no doubt that this man of God is headed towards some wonderful things in God. Y'all just mark these words that I'm saying. And y'all will see for yourselves that this is an anointed gospel ministry, fire, the gospel experience. Hallelujah! Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Reverend Red, the pastor and founder of Power of the Gospel Ministries and also Mighty King Basketball Youth Ministry. Hello, I am Lady Crystal, success coach, five-time Amazon best-selling author, podcaster, publisher, clubhouse host, and speaker. And we are the humble hosts of the Power Lift broadcast on Positive Power 21 Christian Media Radio with our brother, CEO, and founder, Jerry Roy. And you can find Power Lift podcast every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please check us out on Spotify. Look for Red, R-E-D-D, and Crystal Henry. Our virtual ministry is on Facebook under Red, R-E-D-D, Red Henry, every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and 10 a.m., and also on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. We're looking forward to you to join us. Check us out, powerofthegospel.org, for more information, or crystalhenry.net. You are listening to Fire! the gospel experience where the... Is moving, uplifting, and unrestrained experience of biblical inspiration and gospel music. I'm inviting you to let the light of Jesus Christ shine bright in your life. So by all means, keep it tuned in to Fire! the gospel experience, which will uplift your spirit and give you new strength. Be a blessing to your family, friends, and co-workers by telling them about Fire on this station. It's all about Kingdom Kingdom Building.
song is dedicated to the young lady who's contemplating suicide, or the young man whose back is against the wall, deciding between the church and the streets, or simply anyone that's going through hard times right now. We just come to encourage you with these words of hope and prosperity. Ladies and fellas, do me a favor. Sing.
if you don't remember nothing else, make sure that you remember that your health is always on the way. Sounds of Man of God, Michael Terrange is help, help, help is on the way. And before that, we heard from Woman of God, Renee Spearman, with our breakthrough. Don't you just love how these gospel artists just come through with songs that really, really do minister to our hearts and keep us going. We are embracing for your spiritual consideration, redemption from the book of Romans 8 and 23. The word of God says for your consideration, not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. There's an old saying that says, and y'all know how much I love old sayings because they're still here because they have so much truth. Good things come to those who wait. And if that's true, then you and I as believers in our Lord Jesus the Christ have some amazingly tremendous good and I dare say great things coming to us. The Apostle Paul discusses and teaches us and the believers in Rome that our great waiting has great reward to come and is not in vain. These are precious and very real words from the great apostle who he himself has endured and suffered hardship like none of us ever will know. And watching this great God-man's perseverance should be outstanding motivation for everyone that calls on the beautiful name of our Jesus. Romans 8 and 23, not only so, but we ourselves. When the Apostle Paul states not only so, he's testifying on behalf of the waiting of Mother Earth herself. Romans 8 and 19 says, For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. The living earth eagerly waits, y'all, for the sons and daughters of God to be birthed into time and eternity. Our redemption is directly connected with God's creation of earth itself. The healing and restorations of the land are all spiritually connected as all creation of our almighty God. Second Chronicles 7 and 4 bears it out and it's well known. This has been quoted so many times since COVID hit in 2020. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Verse 20 of Romans 8 says, For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. This takes redemption on the whole back to the beginning in the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3 and 17 says to Adam, he says, talk about God speaking to Adam, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. The spiritual connection was indeed so prevalent, y'all, that when God's judgment for the disobedience of Adam and Eve fell, the ground, which was the ingredient from which Adam, the man, was created, was cursed through association. This is why it's important for us to remember the importance of who we choose to be in fellowship with over long, extended periods of time. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 says, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Now, we know, verse 22, Romans 8, that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to this present time. That's a long time that this earth has been waiting for us 
to be redeemed. We're talking about waiting on redemption. Amen. It is so unreal to imagine that our home of planet Earth is groaning. But that would explain the many and ever-increasing natural disasters and devastations across this great land with earthquakes, storms, tornadoes, floods, heat, droughts, and freezing, and on and on it goes. Romans 8 and 23 says, For who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship? the redemption of our bodies. And then, yes, we too find ourselves in spiritual fetal positions, wondering and waiting on how long must we endure our struggles of our flesh and our spirits to be finally relieved of the incessant and quietly kept battle that every Christian endures. I believe God allows these gnawing pains to actually be the spiritual growing pains to lead us into making the right spiritual choices of obedience to God. When we grow weary of giving in to these fleshly charged ideas, promptings, and innuendos, we appeal to the Most High for the spiritual relief to overcome our old man and old ways, not to mention the old habits that are opposed to God and his will for us. Then we experience a strength of spirit that we could never have ever obtained on our own. Yes, we pray and we fast for redemption in the eternal now, but it's through our ongoing process of dying daily that the scriptures call in Luke 9 and 23. Then he said to them all, this is our Lord Jesus speaking, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Where we ask our Holy Spirit God to once again take the wheel of our thoughts, mind, and will to direct us into spiritual fortitude by simply saying yes. Very challenging always, but yielding to God and not our ways and not our will, our flesh has acquired these desires, y'all, that give us temporary satisfaction in whatever ways that it does, only to leave us weak and wanting more of ourselves as Christian believers that don't want to bow down at the altars of our own self-centered lifestyle. So wait, my dear brothers and sisters, because we have great and beautiful, precious promises from God to those of us who have made up their minds that it is always better to wait on this gift of redemption. Amen. Psalms 27 and 14 says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. And then finally, y'all, word of God from Isaiah 40 and 31 says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. Goes right there. So grateful for you all joining me again on another fire gospel experience. I am certainly grateful for man of God coming in and blessing us. Pastor Thomas, he has blessed us and we are so grateful for him coming in with so much wisdom and word. And so much experience in the Bible itself. And also so grateful for man of God, Larry E. Rogers Jr. for coming in with this poignant contemporary message about justice and what we need to uphold in our way. I want to leave you with just this final word from Dr. Phil. The behavior you choose creates the results you get. When you change the behavior, you change the results. If you can do different, you can have different. Thank you, Dr. Phil. There's some spiritual intake in that message right there, right there, and we're going to take it and we're going to receive it as wisdom coming from sources when we seek them that you may not always necessarily look for, 
But I promise you, when we allow God Almighty to step in, there'll be wisdom waiting on us hand and foot. It'll be there everywhere that we need. I want to thank you all. I pray God will bless you, keep you, cover you, and take each and every one of you to higher heights in him. Amen goes right there. I want to make sure that I bless you all with our special guest. He came in and blessed us so, and it is only appropriate that we allow him to end this fire broadcast with another anointed song that he has given us. Man of God, the Afric William Thomas. Don't you know that God, he would have never, ever left us, and we would never, ever have made it. Until next time, y'all be blessed. Bless you, man of God, Pastor Thomas. Come on with that word. Never would have made it. Amen. It goes right there. Yeah.